The button is red and it's big and it's been pushed, which must mean it's Friday. And more accurately, it's Pi Day Friday. This is Dramas, Dave Rush, Ask Me Anything, and Scott. Scott's not visible today, as normal, always and ever swamped with creating the new version of the Network Plus book. I just spoke with him a little bit ago, getting our ducks in order. And thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, he always tells me before we start the show that uh, I'm really busy multitasking and I'm writing and I'm editing and I'm and I'm ending bubbling tarpools. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to copy all this back channel stuff and share it with you. Anyway, Scott always says that uh, he's very busy on the back channel, and he'll be uh, disengaged and distracted and won't have much time to, to focus on the front channel. And then he's always fully engaged. But today, he ensures me, assures me that uh, he's got a, a really critical, time-sensitive project done and so while he will be paying some attention back here, you are certainly welcome to uh, message him. Don't expect as much participation from him as usual. We'll see if that actually works out the way he says. Hey, I've made some changes to my setup here. I'm gonna see if I can keep myself uh, a little bit more eyes focused toward the camera. I've moved some things around so I can see you and you can see me. And <clears throat> more importantly, I can see your messages and I can see my notes and I won't look over here as much no promises but it's a start so it is friday today is uh, october 8th and we've gotten together again once more for pi day friday drama we're going to talk about all things comptia and how we can use raspberry pis to further our studies in pursuing comptia certifications and other general technology uh, today's project is not tightly tied to CompTIA objectives. I'm doing part two of Rocky Linux. And that's all, I'm just gonna do the two pieces of it. Last week we installed it and did some basic configuration and exploring of it. Today I'm gonna to install a monitoring utility on it. And I'm doing that because the monitor utility that we're using is not tied to Rocky or any other distro, it's a very common monitoring thing. And for those of you who might be pursuing, excuse me, there comes the first hiccups. <laughs> I don't know how this happens. I don't hiccup all day long, all week long, except for this two hour slot that I get with you and suddenly <laughs> I'm doing the hiccup thing. Anyway, for those of you who may pursue uh, careers or jobs that require some knowledge of the Linux operating system, I take this opportunity to present things that you will be expected to know. And one of them is monitoring utilities. So we'll dive a little bit more into that as we go on. <clears throat> Voice is a little rough. And it's been like that for a week and a half. And I think I figured it out. Uh, and I will share with you. I'm alone. My missus is home visiting her family. Hey, there's Carla Rain. Uh, and there's nobody here. My kid's off at school and I've had no place to go uh, and pretty much no one to talk to. So I don't talk all day long. Uh, I type, I, I text and things like that and I make the occasional phone call, but my voice just doesn't get any use. So suddenly I've got to talk for two hours and it doesn't start well, but it will smooth out. Oh, probably by the end of the show, right? <laughs> Excuse me. All right, so let's start with this, whoops, new notes kind of thing and see if I can kind of sort of look up toward you and, oh, look at that. I made some changes there and it's all gone. <laughs> all right, so I am Dave Rush. I'm the senior instructor at Total Seminars. And in theory, senior instructors do things like instruct, but I'm like everybody else. We're locked down for COVID. Our customers are locked down for COVID. So I don't get much opportunity to do that. There's plenty of other work to be done. And I want to sidetrack on that. Uh, I got assigned a project uh, two weeks ago. Very complicated project. It's kind of along the lines of one that I do all the time, but this one adds a, a level of complexity to it. 
and I'm cranking away. And then Scott calls me up and says, stop, something is wrong. It wasn't anything that I had done right or wrong. It was just conditions had changed. So we stopped the project and I thumbs up because I have some more good news about RetroPie. And I thought this will be an opportunity to uh, charge into RetroPie. Uh, as far as long as the project is stopped. And my goal was to uh, take that good news and start applying it after the show today with the intent of doing RetroPie next week. And then in my in a conversation that I had with Scott last night on the phone, he said, okay, launch the project again. And bleh, all right, so there goes 14 hours a day worth of that nonsense. So I do have a show for next week and I have lots of time in the evenings to do. We are going to do RetroPie two weeks from today i'll tell you the the good news what i discovered what i learned and why that's possible so i don't get to instruct face to face much like i do i haven't done much in the, the form of video stand up but we still have this this is what the other senior instructor gets to do uh, i get to join you for two hours a week and talk about comptia and raspberry pies and all things technical joined me, joined with me in spirit, if not in corporeal presence, is Scott Jernigan, senior editor, author, co-author, raconteur, bon vivant, and many other titles, musician, of course, uh, LARPer, and so many other, uh, is working the back channel. You may contact him. He will probably respond eventually. Uh, don't hit him up for anything huge. The, the guy is really, really swamped. He's got a a meeting seconds after we close this thing down and he wants to get a document submitted between now and that meeting uh, and the document requires a, a fair amount of work but many thanks to scott as always for his yeoman service and his help and uh, i will try to request occasional help from him but uh, i'm not expecting much and I've, i can do it all myself it just means a little bit of delay <clears throat> Uh, and Scott is moderating. And, uh, this is, if you're paying attention, the 62nd in a series of weekly dramas. It's a presentation of Total Seminars done with the blessing of Mike Myers, president, author, and also many titles. He wears many hats. Uh, and that's literal as well, many of you know. We meet here every Friday, 2 o'clock till 4 o'clock, give or take. And we talk about a project of the week, usually, and other technology. Mike does two shows a week. Also, same channel, 2 o'clock, starting at about an hour, give or take. Sometimes he runs longer and does a full two, sometimes a little short. But uh, join us, please. And uh, if you're enjoying the stream, give it a thumbs up underneath the, the streaming image of us. It helps other people find these things. Like they'll look in our indexes, indices and uh, look for Raspberry Pi and DNS server. And hey. There's a whole bunch of hits on this one done by Dave Rush at, at Total Seminars. So let's go look at that one. And that's all we're doing. We're just trying to help people find really good quality information uh, early in their searches. Hey, look at that. I mentioned it and it already shot up by almost everyone here is thumbs up. You know what? I'm here and I didn't thumbs up. Hey, there we go. We're only missing one. <laughs> that's weird. Okay, so this is an AMA. It's Dave Rush, ask me anything. And the goal of this is to ask me anything. So use the uh, the live YouTube chat to post questions. If you don't want to do that, you're not watching live, maybe you're watching this on an archive, you're shy, you got a long question that won't fit in the 200 character limitation. There are other ways to contact myself and to contact Scott and to contact Mike Myers himself personally, if you so choose. And you can do it just by contacting me via email. I am Dave R at totalsem.com. You can also catch me on my personal email, drushtx at yahoo.com. Scott Jernigan is Scott J at totalsem.com. And Mike Myers is Michael M. If you want to talk to him in person and live, you can't do that. But if you want to talk to him via email, you can do that. We also hang out on a Discord channel. And I will post the links for that in just a second. Announcement, friends. Do I put the Discord channels in my list here? Pirate Square? No, of course not. Nah. There's always something that I leave out every day. Oh, well. <clears throat> in that case, I will post those right here this instant. We don't have a Discord channel. 
as many of the regulars here know, uh, it was set up by a good friend of ours uh, named Jose Braden, and Jose created the unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel, initially with the goal of talking about whatever Mike talked about on his AMA that day. But that has since morphed. It's now a, a very full-fledged, full-scale, knock-yourself-out uh, channel with all kinds. What's going on there? Oh, that. Okay, here we go. I'm posting links for Discord right now. Uh, so there's all kinds of sub forums on there and uh, general forum and Raspberry Pis and Kali Linux and Linux and everything else. Cool stuff. And I just posted that at 2.10, 10, 10 minutes past the hour from our start time. Uh, take a look at that. Join us today. I will be there uh, on 10 to 15 minutes after the show ends. And there's lots of other folks here who are going to be there. Many of us use mics and cameras, and we encourage you to do that. Come on, talk to us face to face and voice to voice. But if not, come on over and just talk to us on text, and we'll talk to you back. Uh, if you use either of those links and it says uh, expired or gives you some other reason why it uh, won't let you in, just look around on that page. There is some other link on that page that says continue anyways, and you'll get in. Hey, that's that. All right, well, let's see who's here. And what they have to say, okay, <clears throat> nothing important enough to disturb the show. Uh, Talwit punched in 123, a little on the early side, but then again, he was in there last night, I think, or uh, yeah, 412 p.m., my message says. He's ready, so I don't know what time that is my time, but I'm sure it was very early in the morning. And then Bob Noob followed up uh, an hour later. And I saw what you wrote, Bob Noob, but obviously we covered that ground on the Discord channel. So we're all good to go here. Hey, I, I should mention it. The reason Bob Noob wrote, uh, if you watch Mike's show lately, you'll know about this. And if you haven't, then here's awesome, shiny new news for you. Here on Drama, we have been invited to participate in a grand giveaway Mike will give away on each of his shows, and I will give away on my weekly show one, count them, one CompTIA voucher good for any CompTIA test except CYSA. I'll do that as a contest uh, toward the end of the show. I don't even know what the contest is going to be. I'll have to come up with something that's fair. No, I won't make you guess a number. That's just a, a royal pain, but... <clears throat> Uh, I'll come up with something. I, I meant to put some thought into that yesterday, and I've been a busy camper, but we will be giving away a CompTIA voucher today. And the there's a pile of rules. They're not real hard, but one of them is one winning voucher per person. If you won one in Mike's show, if you win one in Mike's show, you can't win one here and vice versa. If you win a voucher, you got your voucher. Congratulations. Use it in good health. You cannot have another one. And that's just the rules of the game. Uh, we're flying blind here. There are questions that uh, we don't have answers for yet. Uh, some of you will find out those answers before we do uh, when you get the voucher. But I'll explain more as we get uh, toward that contest at the end. Uh, Andrew Hutz is here. Yo, Patricia Manusi, not Monsi. <laughs> I can do that. I can't always pronounce every name right, but I got that one. Patricia and I have had a, a wonderful uh, long back and forth last night and this morning on discord and join us over there it's it's social as well as technical it's a lot of fun <clears throat> alan duggan's here greetings and mon ami Tolowit is talking to alan scott greets everybody three minutes prior to the show it's drama time Bob, do you keep this show running all this and Mike's show running all the time, just waiting <laughs> to punch in? And it's so good for you. Let's see, everybody talking to each other. Avanette's here. Thank you, sir. Avanette. There we go. And people talking to each other. Why you snitched all the way? <laughs> Crazy homebody girl. Nice to see you, my friend, young lady. Mr. S, first winner of a voucher uh back on monday's show yeah i think you won on monday yeah yeah you did yeah 
uh, 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 Carla Rain is here. Hi, 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 hi. I don't know if you know this. Um, in Morse code, H I H I is how you send uh, the equivalent of L O L L or laughter. So it's did it it did it did it did it did it. Hi, hi. And it's funny because when you move up from Morse code, the Morse code is not required anymore, so everybody uses voice on ham radio now. But instead of laughing out loud and holding a microphone down, you say, hi, hi. And that means you're laughing. Have a nut, Dave. Uh, that's why I would sing in the car on my way to work, clearing out the vocal cords. <clears throat> I should have been doing something today. My voice is a mess. It's somewhat comprehensible, and I'm good enough with that. Andrew Hutz, Dave, my front intake fans sometimes struggle to initially get spinning, and I have to take the front panel off and give them a manual spin to get them going. No, WD-40 would not be a terrible idea, um, except WD-40 in and of itself is not uh, the chemical of choice. Uh, the problem with WD-40 is not only does it have a petroleum content in there, it also has a wax content in there. When the petroleum evaporates, it leaves wax. So a silicon spray would be a better choice. That's just pure silicon or some other uh, lubricant that doesn't leave a wax residual. And yes, I've done that too. Uh, also, a can of compressed air may go a long way. You may have some dust in those bearings that can get blasted out. Oh, I dashed the retro by dreams again. Yep, you've done it, Scott. But it's it's going to happen now. We, we we have the tools. I'm so excited. Buy new fans. They are cheap. <laughs> With pretty art and, and knock to a fan. Sure. This is not a paid advertisement. And I'm a non... <laughs> this, this... Man, what's the term they use for that? Uh, this show was recorded before a live studio audience. Fans work fine. They just struggle to get going. That is not the definition of works fine, Andrew. <laughs> okay, I posted links for Discord at 210. I will be there today. I hope you will join us. Tell it. And by the way, if you're watching this on the archive, somebody's there all the time. Hundreds of people are there all the time. Uh, last time I took a body count, excuse me, I saw ugh, over 425 users. Uh, participants, whatever we call ourselves, Discordians, Discordance. Oh, I like that one. We'll make a Discordance. Uh, and so there's always somebody to talk to textually. And uh, if you want to hook up on a, a camera or, and a mic, hey, just ping me. Do a, an at. I don't know what my name is over there. Probably D Rush TX. And uh, I'll cam with you. And so will lots of other folks. So you can talk to me personally, face to face. I should add that into my contact info. You could talk to me face to face on Discord with a camera. All right. When the moon hits your eye like a big retro pie, that's Talawit. <laughs> Siegfried is here. Good to see you. Uh, I've seen you on uh, on Discord lately. Haven't had a chance to see much on the show. So glad you're back in the fold. Yeah, the chances of winning a, project, a prize are very good today. How many people we got? It ain't many today. Oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah, whatever we got. There's at least 10. We've had at least 10 people do thumbs up, but I can't see that part of my screen. I've moved it. Bob posts messages and deletes them. Killing me, Bob. Carla thinks it's cool. MVM. I don't know my uh, my text acronyms well. I, I know the ones that everybody uses every day. I can do LOL and LMAO and so forth. I don't know what MVM is. But I can always count on Patricia to communicate with us via emoji. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Dallas. Mr. S, you are ever so welcome. And thank you for being the first winner and having such a good guess. And by the way, you know, if you play poker and you watch your opponents, I don't play poker, but I've seen it on TV, um, but and I've seen it in movies. And there's always, uh, not always, but uh, some opponents have 
uh, a tell, right? Participants, you, you get an idea of what they're doing, what they're thinking. I'm going to give you Scott's tell. Maybe he's listening and maybe he will change it as a result. But whenever he participates in these guess a number things, and he's the one who's got to come up with the number you guess, he always goes low. Now, I don't know what's going to happen next time. He's probably heard this and that will change his behavior, but I can confirm it's DRush TX. Thank you. Okay, so my contact information over on the Discord channel is DRush TX. Thank you, buddy. I got ahead of myself, Mr. Couple, Andrew, and excellent, good to know. Glad I didn't use the WD-40. Yeah. And Rahabar, Buyen, Buhuyen, can I get a job with ITF Plus? Yes. The question is, what kind of a job? Remember what ITF, uh, let's see, uh, I will sit for the exam tomorrow. Any last advice? Now, if you're taking the exam tomorrow, you're done. Okay, you're done studying. It's now time to take a break. Let it stew in your mind and let your mind clear. Get a good night's rest and start up. Now, if you haven't taken any practice test questions and you're feeling uncomfortable about your knowledge level, spend a little time today. Uh, finding and, and using practice test questions. We've got some lovely ones uh, in our total tester product available at totalsem.com. And do we have a discount for ITF plus bundle? I don't see one. Scott, that's not in the list, but that seems to me that, I don't know, would, would poke in on that, Scott. Let me know if, if we have a bundle that qualifies for that 50% uh, discount, <clears throat> excuse me, for ITF plus. So your, your first question, can I get a job? Uh, yeah, but remember what you've learned in ITF plus, you have learned to be a user and you have been exposed to a broad amount of tools, right? So you, you learn word processing and databases and some SQL databases and some uh, introductory networking and things like that. So you're not going to get a job uh, probably doing first line support, uh, tier one support, you might, it all depends on how much a, a, an organization is willing uh, to do on the job training with you. Uh, but you know, if you want to uh, find a job, maybe working in a, uh, uh, as a, a, I don't know, an assistant teacher or something like that in a school where you can help uh, students learn how to use their word processors and their database programs and the things like that, that's a possible job. And anybody else, you got any ideas on what you could do uh, job wise? Oh, do this. Make sure you go to the job hunting sites, right? Linda and Indeed and Monster and Career Builder and uh, <laughs> the one that sends me jobs all the time, LinkedIn, uh, and do a, a job search on CompTIA ITF Plus and see who's looking for uh, employees who have the ITF Plus certification. NVM, never mind. Okay, thank you. Uh, Andrew, definitely not dust because this particular fan has been doing it since I bought it. Was so excited to finally have my PC built. Oh, I wonder if it's just old and your bearings could be wearing out. Lube will help, but long term. Siegfried, I've been too busy for my own good. I've been feeling drained, so I'm taking some time to myself and get to watch the show. Outstanding. I'm glad you find the show relaxing. I do. <laughs> Couldn't find a contrarian emoji. Miss Minusi today accused me of being a contrarian. There's probably some truth to that. I, I do tend to be a little contrarian, but only when I think I'm right and somebody should follow my thoughts and opinions. Dropping the gems. Yep. Uh, my dad used graphite powder, absolutely, to loosen up uh, stuck car parts. Not sure if it's compatible with computers. It is not. Problem with graphite powder is it's conductive, but I'll tell you, it's magical stuff. Um, I have, uh, in my youth, done many a, a pine car derby racer, and in my dotage, have, uh, oh, great. <clears throat> Thank you, Scott. Uh, in my dotage, I have helped many uh, young people do pine car derbies and absolutely the uh, lubricant of choice on axles in a pine car derby car is 
powdered graphite. Questions in the item are included almost completely with the book downloads. No value for the customer. Okay. <laughs> Don't say that out loud. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Scott. <laughs> That'll teach me. All right. Always read the back channel silently first. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm an idiot and I'm okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. I haven't had a good laugh in a while. It's good to laugh at myself. Uh, Imspaz. I like that. I came from a dis different industry to the IT field. That's a great thing to do, right? I'm, when you change industries, you bring a different mindset to your new industry. Uh, I saw that in aviation all the time. There was a, a percentage of the, the folks I flew with who had aviation degrees, but most of the rest of us did not. And so we would bring, especially it works really well to work with the aviation degrees, guys fun and, and women fun. They, they know a lot more about the aviation, the business side of it, how airports work and things like that than we do as far as, except for, you know, day-to-day -day what I need to know, how to get into a, a spot, how to contact ground control and ramp control and things like that. Um, but then we would bring to the party, uh, additional information in my case about the electronics going on in the aircraft about the physics of of what's going on and and it opened up wonderful opportunities for conversation in the flight deck uh, we see a lot of people change into the it field uh, who come from music who come from cooking who come from library studies uh, who come from medicine right we see a lot of of former nurses and other medical professionals uh, moved to the IT world, and, and they're all melding this great information that they have. Uh, and that's how industries grow. Yeah, you get wonderful, knowledgeable, thoughtful people who are experts in a field, and they can come up with new stuff. But uh, we call this disruptive technology, right? When you bring in something that's totally new and nobody in this industry ever thought of, and hey, wow, we can adopt that. We can adapt with it. <laughs> okay, did I rant? I love that stuff. Andrew talking to Avanat. Andrew, uh, this is a telewit. I did announce the drama and voucher giveaway in the CompTIA Reddit channel again just now. Odds of winning might go down. Okay, thank you, telewit. <clears throat> I didn't. I should have. I, I will add that in uh, in the RazPi Reddit forums next week. Is there anything called cybersecurity insurance? What's your opinion about it? If there is, yes, there is. Does it go by that name? No. Um, we, we call that mitigation, cybersecurity mitigation. Uh, and it, it's a concept you'll encounter in Security Plus and Security that says uh, how we can share risk. So sometimes we share risk by saying, look, I, there's nothing that I can do about this beyond what I've already done with it. I'm still, so I've protected uh, some thing that is at risk to the best of my ability. However, recognizing that it's possible that my abilities weren't enough, or maybe not yet, maybe they were today, but tomorrow somebody comes up with something new that nobody expected. Uh, yes, there are insurance for various types of cybersecurity, be it physical security, being be it uh, uh, data breaches, things like that. So what's my opinion about it? I think organizations that need it absolutely could, should, would have it. it, it it's, it's appropriate and important in our world in 2021. When people say, says Bob Noob at time 225, you need to learn Linux. What do they mean by that? Do they mean you need to know everything in Linux plus, or should I go deeper? Uh, it depends on your job, Bob, uh, and about your, your career plans. I know you're a, you're a student right now and, and looking at your future. You have to be, if you're going to be in the IT field, aware of Linux, how it's used, what it's used for, and have some basic functionality in it. You need to know how to be able to log in, how to find a file, how to launch a program. If you're not going to be a Linux administrator, you don't need Linux Plus. You don't need a full certification, but you got to be aware of how to function in a Linux environment. You have to be aware, in my humble opinion, uh, of 
understanding what Linux does and how it does it in the industry. Know that Linux runs the cloud, right? It runs all the cloud. Uh, all the AWS stuff is run on Linux machines. And knowing how the services that you want to use in an AWS cloud is created and managed at the lower layers, at the Linux layers, will make you more proficient at using and developing services that run on top of that. So that's what they mean, I believe. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Oopsie at 225. So sorry. Yeah, well, I enjoyed working at Total Seminars. It was fun. <laughs> I wonder if the slip is really pink. Been watching Network Chuck Bob New. There you go. Of course, Bob New. Yeah, but yeah, he's right. Got to learn. You got to you got to know something about it. And then depending on where your career choices lead you, you may have to know more. Reading questions. Lots of people having their own conversations. I'm just sliding by there. Thanks, Andrew. Come for the free voucher. Stay for the great content. <laughs> Very good, Tolowit. Yes, you can grow the nerd mafia. Okay, I'm caught up here. I don't know about that. Agreed. Uh, Cali. Okay, Bob, I got Cali. I know the commands from A+. That's good. I find all the commands in the CMD and the command line interesting. So I thought of studying L+. I think that's a good thing, frankly. I'm studying it. And uh, Rocky, which we started last week and today, is a great component in learning some of the things you need to know for Linux Plus, because there are, are very specific things in there. Now, you can't just know Debian and pass Linux Plus. You've got to know some Arch. You've got to know some RHEL. You've got to know some other stuff, lots of other stuff, and be well-versed in all the different methods it takes to uh, oh, download and install a package. All right, I'm caught up on questions. Let me go back and see notes here. Do what we got to do. Get a little caught up here. How are we doing? It's uh, 32 minutes past the hour. That's a good thing. So we got specials. ITF plus bundles isn't one of them, sadly. But we have this one. Weekly special. Share the screen. I got a lot going on here. There we go. So this week's special. Starts on Monday, my, the, the weekly specials. We only advertise these to the participants of our AMAs and dramas. So this doesn't get advertised anywhere else on the web. It doesn't get advertised on our website. This is for you guys and you guys exclusively. So take advantage of it. Uh, get 50% off our bundles. Bundles are comprised of an ebook and total tester for a particular topic. Our topics that we have these bundles available in include A+, Net+, Security+, Cybersecurity Analyst Plus, Pen Test Plus, and AWS Systems Architecture Associate. No plus on that one. You go to the totalsem.com website. You load up your basket with loot and you check out and use the code this week, Sputnik or Sputnik. And Scott just posted this same information at time mark 232. I kind of read that out loud, Scott, but I did read it first. So, <laughs> and enjoy the, the bundles, enjoy the studying. You're basically getting two for the price of one at these prices at 50% off. So it's a really good deal. <clears throat> our stuff is already the cheapest and our, our total tester products, they are the best in the industry as far as I can tell. Uh, yeah, I don't want to get into my whole industrial rant on that, but I got a, I got a rant if you ever want to hear it. Uh, reading my notes. Uh, good through this Sunday night. I don't know what time. Do it before Sunday and you don't have to worry about it. <clears throat> Do it before the football games start. Uh, a note on projects. I mention this every week and, and let you know. Uh, if the project is specific to Raspberry Pi, last week's was because we did a Rocky installation, Rocky Linux, on Raspberry Pi. So it seems kind of appropriate that you need a Raspberry Pi. This week, we're going to run a program on Rocky, and the program is not dependent on Raspberry Pi. Uh, it will run on every major distro. Uh, so you can do it in the VM that you set up. You can do it on the uh, computer that you set up with any flavor of Linux. 
we're going to do a monitor utility called cockpit. I kind of like that, right? Pilot, cockpit. All right, so any version of Linux, you don't need a Raspi for today. So last week, we did two projects, a simple little one. Uh, we did a follow-up on the Clam antivirus software that we installed in a, uh, a Raspberry Pi operating system. We, two weeks ago, installed this antivirus software, and then we set up a cron job, a scheduled job to run Clam antivirus every night at midnight and make a log of the results. Sorry, reading a back channel message. I will be bringing it up. Okay, I'll do that. Person who just wrote on the back channel. <laughs> anyway, so we did a follow up and we took a look at those logs last week. And then we did uh, our primary project last week, which was to install Rocky Linux on a Raspberry Pi. Rocky Linux is a clone of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Basically, there's three major flavors of Red Hat. There's Red Hat Enterprise Linux. It's a paid for distro. Uh, and what you're paying for is the support. There is, was CentOS, C-E-N-T-O-S. That's the free version. It's the same software, but no support. So it's free. And because of some changes that they're making, it is being replaced with Rocky Linux. And Rocky is available for Intel and AMD boxes, but somebody ported it over for uh, Raspberry Pi and other ARM systems. And Arhel, Red Hat Enterprise Linux is the corporate Linux distribution of choice. If you're gonna be uh, a Linux system administrator, you're going to go into an office and you're gonna find one of two distros there. One is gonna be Arhel 8, and the other is going to be Ubuntu, and Arhel is, is the larger distro. And so that's why I explored this. I thought it was really cool. The fact that we could put it on a Raspi made it interesting and exciting for me. And when, after I put it on, I started playing with it. Oh, my gosh, I love it. And that's why we're doing today's project. We're going to spend a second week here using Rocky Linux in the spirit of continuing to use our uh, Rocky to use our hell. We're going to install Cockpit. Again, it's available for every major distro. We're just going to put it on Rocky because I got Rocky and I'm, I've been enjoying playing with it. So we'll see what it is and what it does as we get to the lab in about 23 minutes or so. Uh, I'll tell you what I am going to do. If you want, I, I guess I should do this. Uh, you know, I, I keep a, uh, a server with a document, uh, with all my documents that I use for these shows. And I will post a link for that server. Is, Scott, would you be so kind as to post the PyR Square link? I'm posting another link. Uh, this is the tutorial that I used to install Cockpit on Rocky Linux. And this was really cool. Uh, this was how to install Cockpit on Rocky, not how to install Cockpit on Rocky Linux for Raspberry Pi. So I thought I'll just give this a try and it worked. And that tells me that uh, it uses an upper level language. It doesn't talk to the core hardware, at least in many cases. And so that's a pretty cool thing. And I'll tell you what, I'm not sure if, if Scott heard, he may be busy. I'm gonna post the, uh, the Pi R Square link. Just posted that now. So the Arcane, he did it, <laughs> posted it at 238. I posted it as well. Sorry about that. Uh, so I have in there my own tutorial, a copy of that tutorial and notes and everything that I'm going to do with uh, installing Cockpit and, and using it. So there's, there's much more in my thing, my presentation today, than installing it. We're going to use it and tour it, and that's kind of cool. Uh, news, tricks, and techniques of the week. <laughs> All right, this one's dumb, but uh, I got up early yesterday morning and just came down and started working. I just kept my PJs on and started working, and my eyes were still fuzzy and blurry, and I was reading uh, an article, and, and the article had the word stupidity in there, but fuzzy, blurry eyes 
didn't see the word stupidity. It saw the word stupicity uh, with a C. And I have decided that that is the word of the week. And I would like to get it some traction. So word of the week, stupicity. <laughs> uh, also, this is not in the archive documents because I just read this 15 minutes before show start. Uh, as everybody knows, there's been a couple of breaches uh, and uh, malware in the last couple of days. Two days ago on the 6th, there was a, a breach of Twitch. And more information is coming out about that breach. I don't have a lot. Uh, all I've got here is about a, a half a paragraph for you. But summary so far, 125 gigs of data, including source code, personal data, uh, private data. I wrote the word personal here. It's private data. There's a difference. And ready for this? Passwords were exposed in that breach. So it's a big breach. Twitch confirmed the incident on Twitter yesterday following release of the data. They haven't revealed any information about the incident, such as how the hackers stole the so much sensitive data. Other unrelated to anything news of the week, and then I'll do uh, computer oriented news, then we'll go back to uh, Q and A's. Draconids. The Draconids meteor shower is tonight. Now, you know, I'm a meteor shower buff. I, I always do the news whenever there's a good one. This one is special. I hope you got dark skies. And more importantly, I hope you have clear skies tonight. You will have dark skies because there is a waxing crescent moon, a little tiny bit of moon not going to impact you. I know some of you guys are in areas with high light pollution. And that's not going to help you. But this one is special because, A, we have dark night. And B, instead of waiting until just before dawn to get the best presentation, best presentation is going to be right after sundown for a couple hours, no matter where you are in the world. So, And we're expecting a couple hundred meteors per hour during the first couple hours of darkness. So if you've got a dark sky, you don't have any light pollution, and you're not cloudy, this is a good night uh, to go lay out that blanket on the, the ground and look up for a couple hours. Uh, my neck of the woods, probably around 7.30 p.m. or so. Can't wait. Uh, I usually watch this with the wife. I'm going to be all alone. So I might have an adult beverage with that. <laughs> okay. Big news. Already did the big news. We're doing a CompTIA voucher. Uh, but I do want to read the disclaimer here. Disclaimer. We are operating in good faith. We're going to do everything that we understand to be correct. We're following uh, what CompTIA is telling us to do. We're following what we understand is supposed to be done. However, that <laughs> doesn't take the other elements off the hook. We don't know what CompTIA is going to do. We don't know if there's going to be mistakes, if they've given us 100% useful information. So if we, get, if we mark you as a winner and we get the stuff from you, uh, we make no guarantees after that. You may, it, it should work. But if it doesn't, we guarantee nothing. We owe you nothing. So sorry about that. But world waits. And no, I don't know how long it's going to take for you to get that contact. We are re uh, reacting right away. As soon as we get the information from you that we're supposed to get, we pass it on to the powers that be. And then the ball is in their court. And again, they haven't told us how long they're going to take to respond. And when they do respond, they won't respond to us they will respond directly to you. That's why it's important that you give a good email address. More information for that when we get to the contest later in the show. <clears throat> Other announcements? Let me throw this one up. Guest announcement, this one, share that. I'm doing this announcement every week for the next three weeks, if you include today. <clears throat> October 29th, right after the show, on the unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel, we are having a costume slash fancy dress party. There will be winners. Uh, there will be a Raspberry Pi kit. There will be two other prizes. I'm thinking that I may push back my voucher that I'm allowed to give on that day uh, instead of in drama as one of the, the prizes on the fancy dress party. So good reason to participate. And again, that gives us a nice big pool to participate since we've got 400 people on drama. I'm sorry, on uh, Discord. Uh, the contest will begin 
at 1545 and last for one hour. That means I got a typo here. This should be, no, I'm right. 1545 to 1645, 345 to 445. We're going to cut the show, uh, drama show a little bit short so we can start that early and people get in bed. Uh, yeah. So the whole costume, the whole contest is best costume. Well, there'll be a first place, a second place, and a third place. And at the moment, the plan is first place gets the Raspberry Pi 4 kit. However, if I do the voucher, the voucher is worth more, I may change that. So we'll let you know. And I don't know what the third prize is going to be. Total seminars, employees, you may, you must, you should participate. You are not eligible for prizes. And let me get one other thing ready to go. I got one other announcement here. Yeah, where are you? No, no, no. Two, there we go. Okay, I got it. I'll put this up and then I'll read from my notes. So I got an invitation the other day to be a guest on another show. And I got the invitation last Monday and the show was on Tuesday and I'm ready, I'm prepared, but I want, I, I declined for that day. I rescheduled and said, let me do it in a week so I can get the word out to our show watchers and to my folks on LinkedIn and all my other social media content. So what we've got here is a show called, uh, Amateur Radio Roundup, I think. It's primarily ham radio folks, but those folks are into computers and technology and uh, broad ranging topics, including things like Raspberry Pi. So they've asked me to come on, talk about our show, talk about what we do with Raspberry Pis. I'll probably have to uh, talk a little bit about Raspberry Pis used in ham radio. And there are probably a lot of folks out there, but uh, hey, join us. Uh, it's a, a participatory show, just like this one. It's, uh, it's not YouTube, it's some other thing it's tmedlin.com uh which is tom medlin he's the the guy here this is his amateur radio call so on tuesday night nine o'clock eastern time i will join him on his show go to w5kub.com you'll get redirected to tmedlin.com and there's a link in the middle of that page that says something like join the live stream or whatever and you do that and there's a little place for you to uh just create a, a username for that session and you can participate in the uh, the chat channel. You don't have to register or anything like that. You can register if you want and have yourself a, a reserve name if you want to, excuse me, participate all the time. But really excited, looking forward to uh, doing the show. And I hope to see some of our familiar faces there. That'd be great. Okay, did that, did that, did that, did that. Okay, I got one other useful piece of news. So I'm always working on trying to get RetroPie going for you. And I had a backup. I have a backup because this still isn't guaranteed to work. But I spent a little time one night, I don't know, on the weekend, a couple of days ago, whenever it was, and I found somebody who says they have a solution for viewing retro pi over vnc it's and that's the whole problem that we've always had here i wanted to be able to show you on screen what you're supposed to be seeing on the retro pi screen and i had two alternatives one is to say just follow my instructions and then do it and you'll see it and the other would be to uh, pull up another camera and point it at my raspberry pi screen uh it'd be cruddy but eh. It wouldn't be much worse or much better than what we've got here. Apparently, this solution is low performance. It doesn't play real time. You couldn't use this thing to play RetroPie over VNC, but we can show it. It shows about apparently uh, half the, the frame rate that you can get in real live play on a monitor. And there's a about a half a second delay or so. But it's enough that if it truly works, we can do everything that I want to do. The installation is really, really simple. Um, I could cover that with you in five minutes. The challenging part is, and it's not even that challenging, but adding ROMs, adding games 
to the thing. That's not well documented everywhere. And I've got all that done. My, my, my presentation is written. It's ready to go. It's all just been held up by not being able to show you. So we do this and this is what you see. And so now it's assuming this works, then I can accomplish that. And if it doesn't work, then I will use one of the other two methods. I'll either just say, okay, type this in. Now look on your monitor and you'll see something really cool. Or I'll use a, a little backup camera and give you enough of a view to get the idea. Okay, resource archive is up and that's everything. I don't have any uh, questions from last show. Here, let, uh, I got 10 minutes before I got to start the thing. Let me do one other thing here. So I've made a, a little thing here. Some of our participants, uh, three so far, have blogs that they would like to tell you about and have you participate in. And so I've created a different kind of slide. Uh, I'm calling this uh, Friends of Show plug slide. So you can see them all on a single slide. You can pause this if you want to go remember this. I'm not going to post these. Scott, if you want to post these three links, you're certainly welcome to. But I'm, otherwise, I'm just going to have folks uh, pause their screen here. There's nothing hard to remember or hard to write down. There's no, and that's not 100% true. There's one of them that's got uppercase and lowercase funky characters. But you can do it with a, a screen freeze. So we got Andrew Hutz's blog. And uh, talking to uh, Andrew today, uh, he hasn't got a new presentation since last time we talked. However, he is working on one as we speak, and he expects to have one up before the show next week. So Andrew's at tgasec.wordpress.com. He does security topics, hacker topics, things like that. Tolowitz got a Slices of Life in Hawaii blog on YouTube. And you can find that over here at these very complicated uh, uppercase and lowercase letters. Uh, tell what you can get that changed, by the way, you can get your channel named to a traditional name, uh, not too hard to do. And elbow who's I haven't seen on here today I haven't seen him on uh, discord lately, but he does a, uh, a show called reality check uh, reality tech on YouTube, where he reviews inexpensive technology hardware and software. So all good blogs I've enjoyed them all and continue to do so. All right, that takes care of everything till we get to the project. So let's go uh, catch up on questions and then we'll start la projet. Thank you. All the blog links were posted by Scott at 251. Appreciate you putting the time into this. I know you're working hard back there. That should be just about every link. There's only one or two more links that we're gonna stick up before the show is over. All right, I super scrolled. No surprise. Wow. All right, I'm probably gonna okay, I have Cali. I think that's about where we left off. Like learn, yeah. All right, so Scott at 232 posted this week's specials. <clears throat> Andrew says, Cali is a great place to start learning Linux because you use Linux as part of a broader IT field. Sure. Richard Bro, is Cali worth starting with as it's more of a pen test Linux, but is there really that much difference between distros? Yeah, okay. So I don't think, I'm, I'm, I'm going to disagree a little bit with Andrew here, uh, that Kali is a good place to start learning Linux. Kali is a package full of utilities. You boot the thing up, you log into it, and then you select from the graphical interface the various tools that you want to use. And some of them are Linux and command line oriented, but they're mostly all set up and ready to go. So I don't think you're learning much core Linux from that. My preference is to pick a Linux distro, a common one, a, one that's a, a Debian, uh, excuse me, fork, uh, Debian, Raspberry Pi OS, Ubuntu, something like that. Uh, and do a little learning from those if you're uh, if you're a little nervous and, and feeling concerned about learning Linux because you're you've only ever played with Windows, there's Linux Mint, uh, which is available for Raspberry Pi and of course can be installed in virtual machines and regular computers. So I, I learning them both at the same time, I think is a great thing to do. But if you're going to learn one at a time, I don't think Kali is the way to start learning Linux. Kali is the way to start learning Kali, in my humble opinion. <clears throat> Bob Noob, if I want to eventually get into cyber, 
You're going to need a more descriptive word than that. Cyber means computers, man. What do you recommend? I like using all the tools in Kali, such as Sniper and Nmap. I just learned all the basic commands of Nmap. Nice. Uh, that's pretty good because it takes people years to learn all the basic commands of Nmap. So if you've got them all learned in, in the short time that you've been working with them, more power to you. But I got my doubts. Um, so I don't know. What do you mean get into cyber? Be more specific here. There's there's pen testing. There is cyber cybersecurity analysis. Uh, is it somebody has broken in or, or somebody has committed a malicious atrocity and it's your job to untangle it, to figure it out and to develop uh, a, a solution for it. All of those things are cyber. Uh, cyber involves physical security. It involves encryption, decryption. So it's a broad field. Uh, my recommendation is learn foundations, learn A+, learn Net+, take Security+, Plus because you will be exposed to many of the cyber fields, and that you can use to find one that you like, and then you pick a path, and you go start learning down that path. You guys learn deeper dives as Andrew Hutz at 237 into starting out with red team stuff. Hop on Discord after AMA and we can dig in. Please join us on Discord after. I'll post the uh, links up again shortly. Okay, uh, Scott and I both at 238 posted the same link. Uh, how to get? Oh, uh, okay. So I post the uh, the tutorial that I used on how to install Cockpit. At 238, and then at 238, Scott and I both posted the links to my web server with all the uh, documents that I use for the shows on it. Richard Bro, I can't today because of another engagement, but it's a topic I'd like to sure. Okay, back and forth conversation. Most days I'm in checking things out between studying. Great. Bob, Dave, when I type my name in quotes into Google, it's a rather unique name. Uh, websites with my posted comments under random YouTube videos. Is this normal? What do you think of this? Um, there is no such thing as a unique name. Google owns YouTube. Google knows you. You have a Google account with YouTube and with Google. And if you got an Android phone with that, they know your name. They will sub and or provide uh, alternative names in that kind of stuff. So uh, what do I think about this? I hate Google. I hate their intrusiveness. I hate their the, the fact that they suck so much of our personal and private information. And we're stuck with it. You know, don't use Google anymore. Don't use YouTube. But there you go. Sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. Scott's got a light pollution problem. Can I put pass since I already won? I don't know what the contest is going to be. So sure, you can put pass. Richard, good chance I'll take you up on that. Okay, a Cali Discord would be nice too. We have a Cali sub forum in the unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel. I'm no expert on Cali, says Andrew, but he has been putting a good deal of time and effort into it. Building simulators currently free and epic. Link to story in Discord. Okay. I just saw that was about to post. There we go. Understood my issues. Yeah. Danny Vandermeer. Okay. That's a comment here. PC building simulator. If you want to use Linux as a daily, nah. now we've covered all this stuff. David Zintera is here. Isn't that the guy who video streams from Dayton Hamfest every year? I'm going to Dayton this year. I canceled it last year. I will be there. Uh, if you're a ham and you're going to be there, let's arrange a meetup, bud. <clears throat> but you're extremely new to the field, still trying to get through CompTIA 3. Okay. The, the trifecta, we call that, Richard. And it's a good thing to do. I'm still enjoying Windows 11. Uh, I posted a, a, I didn't post a link anywhere outside. Uh, apparently, AMD CPUs running under window, uh, Windows 11 are running 15% slower than Intel chips. They promise a fix.
Yep. Richard's been a regular in AMA for a very long time. Uh, Scott posted the uh, links for the blogs that I posted up there for Friends of Show at 251. I'm reading questions here. It's an old YouTube channel. Okay. Patricia <laughs> is a perfectly legitimate name for a YouTube channel. Jiminy Christmas. You, you're going to fight. My name is Dave, Patricia. You want to want to go contrarian on that? Because it's not really. <laughs> I'm the opposite. BBB. And there's a Tullowit. Thinking you need at least 100 subs to get a nice name. That's <laughs> probably true. Siegfried. No, you don't. Um, I've got one. Uh, that's a nice, simple name. Uh, yeah, DRSTX, user DRSTX. Siegfried, Cali was the first Linux distro I downloaded. And even though it was hard at first, I think it was an amazing place to start. Excellent. Too quick on the keyboard. Hundreds. I'm getting close to the end here. Pen testing. I did owned up to my post comments uh, and reading. I meant it's some Russian or Polish websites that I come with when I put my name in quotes. I don't know. Yeah, I saw the 50% slower thing. If a patch speeds me up more than it is now, I'm stoked. Okay, I am caught up on questions at three o'clock. That takes us to the hour. And let's start a project then. We're gonna install and tour a monitoring program. It's available for all major distros of Linux, it's called Cockpit. We're gonna put it on that Rocky uh, Linux that we installed on our RPI a week ago. So let me put the uh, the link for the, the uh, tutorial up again, and I'm gonna put a slide up for that. Uh, let's see, I can do this, I can do this, Cockpit installation tutorial link and i posted that at about 301 <clears throat> and sometimes when people watch this they uh they watch it and they can't see uh the youtube chat for a variety of reasons. It may have already scrolled off screen, maybe we, whatever. So I'm also gonna put that up here uh, on this screen. Again, pause this uh, if you need to write this down, uh, but here's the, uh, the tutorial that we used for the installation. Sometimes I talk like William Shatner. I just pause at inappropriate times. <laughs> he invented pause acting, you know. Okay, just a little bit about it as, as far as background goes. There's a lot of console managers for Linux, really popular ones whose names you're going to hear every day if you're going to get into the administration side are cPanel, it's a lowercase c, upper p, uh, web host manager, WHM. Those are two of the really big popular ones, uh, and they're cool and they're commercial. You will purchase the license for those. Uh, we're going to use Cockpit, it's open source. It does everything that those ones do, doesn't have the big name, doesn't have the degree of support. But if you're doing small to medium sized network, it's fine. There are lots of folks out there doing large networks. We're going to do a very small one, <laughs> one machine. And it doesn't monitor networks, it monitors the machine. And that's the other problem with uh, cPanel and WHM and things like that is you got to buy a license per machine that you're monitoring or you buy a site license or whatever. Here, you can put cockpit on all your machines, open source. So available, let's see, you can access all major functions. It's available for all major versions, including Ubuntu and Raspberry Pi and Debian and Red Hat and its derivatives and plenty of others. Officially, the version of cockpit for Rocky that's running on Raspberry Pi is called Pi Cockpit, P-I-C-O-C-K-P-I-T. But whatever, it installs like a dream. Uh, let's see, I've been enamored with Rocky Linux for the last couple of weeks, so we're gonna install it on that platform. Uh, and here again, another good reason to install Rocky because you get to learn Red Hat Enterprise Linux concepts and it installs the same software as Red Hat does. 
99% of the time. Uh, but of course, it's, it's agnostic. It runs happily on x86 or AMD-based and ARM-based versions of Linux. That's cool. Uh, what do we care about this? Manage Linux host have multiple services running. Right, so we can monitor not just the computer with it, but various services. You can monitor the DHCP server running on it. You can manage and monitor uh, DNS servers and file servers and make users and do some other cool things that are uh, menu and graphical oriented. Remember, by default, Red Hat and its derivatives, their command line, while you can install a graphical user interface, you're turning that machine from a server into a user workstation. Linux servers live and die on the command line, but there are some graphical utilities sometimes that make management and usage a little bit practical, and this is one of them. And then this is the really cool part. We are not going to install a graphical interface on the server itself. When we install Cockpit, it creates a web interface, and so you access that from another computer using a web browser. So we've saved a ton of memory by not running GUI stuff and browsers and things like that in the server itself. Okay, I got more gobbledygook. You can read that in the, uh, the archive notes if you download it. I'm just gonna dive right in. Required hardware, Raspberry Pi or other computer running Linux. So I'm using a Raspberry Pi, I'm using a four uh, I think it's got four gigs in it, not because it needs it, it's because that was the one I had on top of the pile when I did this project. Uh, so Raspberry Pi and it's running Rocky Linux and that's it. Software, you'll have to either establish an SSH connection to your Pi or use a, uh, a traditional keyboard and monitor. Opposed to the tutorial, steps. So step number one, before you get the whole project started, let me get uh, a copy of the server up on screen. <clears throat> and while I get this going, I will describe to you uh, what step number one is. You're going to create a user. And it's got to be a user that has the ability to have supervisor powers. So it's got to be a member of the sudoers group. That's the account that we're going to use when we actually log in and use the, uh, the utility. Not installing it. We'll need a, a supervisor account for that, too. Sorry, I'm trying to multitask. I'm talking and bringing up this at the same time. That doesn't work, so give me a second. 2.168.1.105. I'm just establishing an SSH connection with my server. The default account that we used when we installed Rocky Linux uses the rock, the account Rocky, R-O-C-K-Y, the password, one word, all lowercase, Rocky Linux. Okay, I'm in. Let me share that with you. Now, I've already done a lot of this stuff, uh, but I, I'll do some more and we'll have to do some faking. What are you doing there, Goober? Okay, so the first step in this process, I'm not gonna do this. All right, just focus on that. You're gonna see my head looking in the wrong direction. Sorry, but one screen, one camera, everything is here and there. So to make a user account, and this is about the same in most versions of Linux, we sudo user add minus M minus G, those are going to make home directories for us. Uh, and then oh, M is going to make home directories. Minus G is going to add the user to a group. So you don't have to do that after the fact. Now, if you're using Rocky, you don't use the group sudoers. You do that in most other versions of Linux, but this is a secure version of Linux. It's SE Linux enabled. And so we use a different group. It's called Wheel. And then the name of the account that you're going to create. Uh, so I don't know, I always make an account called Fred. Bam. And now, since this is secure Linux, I got to prove, sorry, there goes my beeper, one minute. I got to prove that I am a, a supervisory user. So I put in Rocky Linux. 
And he says, okay, I didn't get any error messages. So the user Fred account was created and he was put in the wheel group. And I guess I can also do this. How about LS slash LS whack home. There you can see the home, the new folder that he got made. When we do the, our project today, I'm gonna to use this account that I created the other day, DRush TX. I guess I could probably use Fred. I might do that, it'd be fun. Next step is to give him a password. So I'm gonna say sudo password, P-A-S-S-W-D, and then the name of the account that I'm assigning a password to, Fred. And it says, okay, what's the new password? And I'll give him a new password. Enter. You don't get to see it while you're typing it in, of course. Retype it to make sure you got it right. Okay, I got it typed in correctly. So Fred is a potential pseudoer. And what we have to do is activate that. And this is all documented step by step in my, my document. So test DRush or uh, tested Fred is a pseudoer. All we got to do is say SU Fred and put in his password. And okay, I'm able to act as him. Now, if I say, who am I? I'm Fred. But if I say pseudo, who am I? This is the test. It says where you are. Oh, got to prove it. I got to put in Fred's password here. It says I'm root. So he is truly, the Fred account is a pseudo user. So I'm going to exit out of the Sue environment. I don't need that now. I've, I've tested it. I've activated it. And that's the pre-work for the installation project. Now in the, uh, the tutorial, they say, make a user account. <laughs> and they say, don't use root as a user account. Okay, we don't, it's deactivated. All right, now we're gonna install Cockpit. First thing you always do before you ever install a new software is to sudo apt or apt get if you like update and you can leave it at that if i do an update i always follow it up however with and then sudo apt or apt get i'd like to pre-feed the yes upgrade uh, i did this this morning uh this is a lot quicker so i'm actually going to do this here <laughs> Oh, they don't do app get in here. They only do app. App get has been deprecated in Rocky. You won't see apt on CompTIA exams. You will see apt get. Oh, stop it. Pseudo. Oh, God, I'm an idiot. This is Rocky. We don't use apt in here. We use DNF. Dandified version of yum. DNF. Okay. Upgrade, sudo DNF update and sudo DNF minus Y upgrade. Here we go. Buzz, 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 grind, grind, grind. And now I shall read my notes. Hey, it's done. Cause I've updated it recently. And it's not like Debian distros where they have to go through a lot more garbage uh, to check updates. Of course, there's also almost nothing installed on here. So there's not a lot to check. Okay, the process to install it, it's already installed, so I'm just going to type the command and I'm not going to hit the enter key here, uh, is very simple. It's sudo dnf install cockpit. I don't have to install pycockpit. This is just cockpit. The project is called pycockpit. And I'll hit the enter key and it'll do buzz, 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 grind, 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 and it'll be done. And then there's only one more thing that we need to do. And it's just a couple of lines. And that's, I want cockpit to launch every time I boot this thing up, right? So we're gonna use uh, what's called the system control 
utility, we'll say. And again, I'm not going to hit the enter key on here because I've already done it. Pseudo system CTL start cockpit dot socket. So that's going to start it as, exactly as it says. Uh, actually, this is what uh, puts it in the, the startup process. We hit enter. It takes about a tenth of a second, and it says, okay, you're done with that. And then it's not working yet. We're not running cockpit yet, so we've got to do one final command, and that is sudo system control enable cockpit.socket. We hit the enter key on that, and now it's enabled, and it will launch every time we boot up this box. So one thing we can do and hit the enter key on is to confirm its status. Use the system control command again, sudo system control status. cockpit.socket. And it does something a little bit unusual. It, it, it's a little different than the way system control works in some other versions of Linux. He reads the, the status like a text file with a text file displayer. So it says, okay, there's 10 lines in here and I'm not at a prompt. In order to get out of this thing, you got to use the Q command. Just hit Q and okay. So we can see Rocky Pie system, it's been started and it's listening, which means it's enabled and it's listening on a particular web socket. Now it's working, but this is Rocky. And that means there's a firewall that doesn't allow anything to come through. So while I'm gonna use a, uh, a web browser on another computer, when I try to get to the web server on here, the firewall says no, because this is secure Linux and the firewall by default says I block everything. So this is all in the tutorial. Again, I've done these. So until we get the status, I'm not gonna hit the enter key. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna say sudo firewall dash CMD, stop it, double dash, permanent, we're going to make a permanent entry in the firewall. And who are permanent? Yeah, I spelled it right. And who is going to be impacted by this thing? That's called the zone. We do another double dash zone equals, stop it, public. And then what are we going to open in the firewall? Dash dash add dash service equals cockpit, enter. You can copy and paste that from my document. And when we hit the enter key on there, you won't see anything. And the entry will have been made in the firewall. However, the firewall only gets red when it boots up. So we either have to reboot the machine or we can say, hey, dump everything that you've learned about the firewall and reread it and re-implement it. So that's what we'll do. We'll say sudo firewall dash CMD minus minus reload. We can do that right now. It won't hurt anything. And that says dump what you've learned about the firewall in the past, read the firewall configuration file now and implement whatever's in there. Success. So if I wanna see what's in the firewall, sudo firewall command minus minus dash dash list dash all and here we see services that are open cockpits open dhcp version 6 client is open http is open and ssh is open We've opened port 22 for things other than SSH, specifically TCP. And these are all defaults, except for cockpit. These are all defaults of the firewall. It's got to have some basics. And that's from the installation. 
So we're done. Cockpit is installed. It's running. The firewall is open. So I'm going to dive out of here. <clears throat> I'm going to update a screen here that's not going to impact you. You know, when I do this stuff, uh, my monitor screen winds up about two minutes behind. So I want to get caught up with everybody else. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go open up a web browser. And let's do a fresh one and let's try Fred. So I did discover one thing that didn't make me happy. Okay, there's a fresh browser tab. Let me share that with you. If this chokes, then I'll go back and use the other one, but I'll show you what I had a problem with. Yeah, come on, anytime you care to share. I have so many things open. Screen sharing a shop as the shared window is closed. Let's try that again. Do you, do you, there it is. Then I am low on memory. So sometimes things happen a little weird here. <clears throat> All right. So this is just a fresh browser tab. What we're going to do here is we're going to put in the IP address of our server, 192.168.1.105. Now they're gonna tell you to start out by using secure. So, okay, HTTPS colon whack whack. Now, when you hit this the first time, there's no certificate installed in there. And so you're gonna get an error message and they walk you through how to deal with that error message. You go to the advanced settings and you say, it's okay, I trust this, continue anyways. I've already done that in this browser. So I don't think it's going to uh, try and hit me up again, but let's see. Yeah, it's a little slow. It's been slow in the past when I've done this. Oops, forgot something. Let's try that again. It doesn't operate on port 80. It operates on port 9090. So you got to have that. So we follow it up with a colon 9090, enter. And things are happening. What are you doing? HTTPS colon whack whack 192.168. Oh, I had a double colon in there. Five colon ninety ninety HTTPS colon whack whack. All right, ready? There we go. So I got a not secure warning here. Again, the first time you do this, you're going to get an error message. Now, here's where I had problems the first time, and I still have a little bit of problem with it. I'm not sure what the cause is, but we're going to put in the name of an account who has the ability to be a supervisor. So I'm going to put in Fred here and I'll put in his password. And we hit log in. And it goes buzz, 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 grind, grind, grind. Yeah. Okay. So it's done this to me in the past. <clears throat> and so what I've done here to, to get past it is to just hit the enter key on that, that box a couple of times. There we go. And it finally brings up the screen. All right, so that takes you through the tutorial. We added some stuff in front on how to make a user account. Then we did the tutorial steps and then we've logged in to monitor. Cool, we're in good shape. It's only uh, 23 minutes past the hour. This is gonna be a quick thing. We're gonna tour this for a few minutes, talk about some cool things and then we'll show you how to add some things in here that's also documented in here in my archive documents. So we're starting out on the overview page. By the way, don't use the back arrow here. If you do, you get logged out and you have to log in and start again. Just go back and forth between these things. If you're 
if you're in a menu in a sub menu of a page to get back out, don't back arrow, just hit the main entry over here on the left side. So first things first, it, it checked. It did a, a, a pseudo DNF update and says, hey, you're up to date. I've checked your, your operating system revision. It's up to date. I get real-time information on how busy my CPU and RAM are. And these are uh, information that are, are available from other utilities. This utility just puts them all together and makes it easy. What happens if we take a look at details and history? Then we get more details. We get a little more history. So to go back, oh, so this thing says it's missing a module, a package. And I'm going to show you when we get done, pardon me, how to add that package and any other packages that you want. So I'm going to go back to overview here, get back into the main page. System information. This is a GUID number. This is a, uh, a universal <laughs> GPT number. <clears throat> And it's been up and running for six days since the last time I rebooted it. Which, yeah. I wonder why I rebooted it. Eh, I rebooted it a day after we were done with class last week, but it must have been for some. Oh, I know what it was because I was having problems with that login thing and I thought rebooting might solve it. Okay, you can change the host name on here. This is how I changed it from its default. I don't remember what the default was, something generic, local host. No, it wasn't localhost, but it was something like that. So I changed it to Rocky Pie and gave it a descriptive name. I can join a domain here. We got to install some other stuff. You got it. You can read most of this stuff. I'm not going to describe all this to you. I want the hardware details. Instead of installing one that was customized for ARM, I don't get every piece of information here, but it does say, oh, you got a Broadcom CPU in here and you've got some kind of serial bus controller, no information in memory. How about the logs? <clears throat> so there's uh, logs happen all the time. Every time I log into this thing, every time I install a program, every time I make a user, uh, that's part of secure Linux, that gets logged. And there's more logs that I can turn on and turn off. And this thing knows all the default locations for all these standard logs. So I can go and read them from here instead of go hunt them. I don't know, uh, Etsy logs slash whatever is where the uh, the clam AV log is. But this thing looks in Etsy logs and says, here's all the logs that I found. Take a look at them. What's going on with networking? So I'm using a hard wire on this thing. I don't have uh, my Wi-Fi turned on. WLAN is inactive. Uh, we can turn that on from here. We can turn it on through all the other methods. But here we go, real-time information about what's going on, transmitting and receiving uh, through my network interface. This one is the only one going on. This dev WLAN, that's a virtual interface. There's network logs. I can enable or disable the firewall from here. I can add or remove rules from firewalls here. That's cool. Oh, look at this. This is built into Rocky. You can create a virtual machine right here. The ability to make virtual machines is native and inherent in Rocky and Arhel and CentOS and Fedora. I'm not gonna make a VM right now. I wanna make new accounts. I want to delete existing accounts. You can do that here. Maybe I get rid of that DRush account. Oops, let's go into him. I can change his password. I can force him to change it, her to change it. I can lock it. I can give him SSH keys so he can get in. I can give him a full name. That's Dave Rush. And I could delete him. Yeah, where's my save? Enter. <clears throat> okay, he's created. Back to the main menu. And then finally, services that are running. Not finally, because then we got to look at the tools. Not going to look at all this stuff, but I am going to look at two. <clears throat> and we will have plenty of time after this 
to do contests and answer more questions and have a little fun. Okay, take your time, read all those services, because there's always a lot of services going on in a Linux box, not just the ones we set up. And again, remember, this isn't Rocky exclusive. This is Ubuntu, and this is Debian, and this is Raspberry Pi OS, and, and, and. By the way, let me see if I can move this. Up here, you see this administrative access. The account that I'm using has administrative access. And therefore, this utility has administrative access. You could use one without administrative access. Things that I can do up here with my account and just pick languages, provide my own SSH keys, log out. Okay, so there's all my services that are and aren't running. I can enable or dim, uh, disable services. I'm not going to read them all to you. This isn't a class on services, but it's fun to experiment with. Be careful when you're experiment. Do a backup first because some services, once they're disabled, they don't get re-enabled by default when you reboot. They're permanent. I want to go down here to applications. These are the tools. By default, there's no applications installed here. So I installed a Manage Virtual Machines application. And I want to talk about how you can add other applications. Oh, I guess we can go look. And that's why the uh, virtual machine thing worked, right? It didn't work until I, I added the appropriate support package. Okay, cockpit project, install the VM, yeah. Okay, so we want to see other packages that can be installed. <coughs> Excuse me. And what I can do is open up a, an SSH session or, hey, there's a, a tool down here to do that. So cool. I'll just use the terminal session here. It's using the Fred account, log in as sudo. So to find out what applications are available, I'm going to do a sudo search. sudo DNF search cockpit. All of the packages that are available for cockpit are titled with the beginning word cockpit. Oh, got to prove I'm allowed to do this. Fred's password. Enter. And now he's gone out to the repository and it says, I found everything that has to do with cockpit. And the installable packages are the ones that are dot no arch. And so there's a composer can create a GUI for use with cockpit, do my own GUI here. I can deploy developers tools and guides. There's the one that I had to install for making virtual machines and so forth. So I'm gonna install a package here just so we can see how that process is done. It's really simple. Uh, this thing has a, uh, a container manager called a pod manager. And to install it, all we're gonna have to do is sudo dnf install, and then the name of this thing, podman dot no arch. And I haven't installed this in the past. I don't know if it's gonna be a long install or a short one, but we got time, so it don't matter much. What did I do here? Oh, just a minor typo. Cockpit dash podman dot no arch. I forgot cockpit here was in purple because that was a, a successfully found term. One more time to fix the DNF typo. <laughs> okay, we're cooking. <clears throat> hey, do you really wanna do this? And when you go into Raspberry Pi OS, the default answer to these questions is usually yes. Here it's no, so I'm gonna put in a lowercase y, enter. Uh, 18 packages are gonna get installed. Somewhere it's gonna tell me total size. 
Yeah, we'll just find out. You really want to do it? There we go, 125 megs. No, I don't want to do that. That's going to take way too long. Man, I hit the backspace. Oh, I hit Y and then it picked up. All right, so it'll download 125 megs. While it's doing that, I think I can uh, leave it and I can go over to applications and we would see in applications, the virtual machines and we would see Podman. So I'm done with that. I'm just gonna let that thing run itself and it'll be there. There's diagnostic reports, there's a kernel dump. SC Linux, that's secure Linux. This is where you enable and disable features of secure Linux. And so you can do that there. What do we got here? Page unresponsive, wait, yeah, it'll work. <clears throat> Some of these things take forever. And then software updates, that's like doing a, uh, a pseudo DNF update and pseudo DNF upgrade. So that is cockpit, cool utility. Keep waiting, there we go. <clears throat> and back to me. And a refresh on this screen, because it's way behind for me. Let me put things back where they are so you can see me kind of looking at the camera in the gen. Whoops, what did you do there? <laughs> put this over there without zooming it into full screen. All right, anything else in my notes about that? <clears throat> if that gets done before we get done, it should. Uh, we'll go back and take a visit and take one final look at it. Did that, did that, did that. Okay, here endeth the lesson. So let's see what's popped up in uh, the chat field. And then we'll do a contest for a voucher. Is it 36? We got plenty of time. When are we gonna do it? Sometime before the show ends. <laughs> and uh, back channel people, I need a contest. I haven't thought of a good one, something fair. I had one, had one in mind yesterday and I didn't write it down. Maybe I wrote it down in my notes. Let me see here. Contest, no. <laughs> Hold contest for CompTIA voucher, but don't define what it is. <clears throat> uh, there's back channel stuff going on. People are ready to post the blog links at 251. Thank you. <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> we'll see if you uh, change your zebra stripes. <laughs> what is going on there? Oh, okay. That's fine. All right. Catching up on questions. I finished off at about 257 or so. So let's see if anybody had anything to say in my absence. Oh, good. Oh, not too much. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, 301, when I said pen testing, I meant I want to get into pen testing to answer your question. Okay, so uh, yeah, pen testing, like I said, I, th I think I kind of stand on my background. You got to understand networking. You got to understand networking. Th that's really simple. And if you're ready to launch straight into networking, cool. Most people are going to need, you don't have to have A plus certification. You don't have to have network plus certification, but you do have to have the equivalent knowledge to make SEC plus comprehensible or to make pen testing comprehensible, comprehensible. And then you dive into pen test. And if uh, what I would do is I would look up, uh, this is, okay, how to describe this. Look up pen testing certification path. Now, Becoming a pen tester is not about collecting a pile of certificates. Being a pen tester requires having enough knowledge and information to learn and then to join an organization that will teach you. Maybe it's a formal educational institution. Maybe it's uh, an on-the-job training organization, something like that. But you know, I've got 35 certificates all the way through Pen Test Plus and Cybersecurity. Hire me. Cool. How much hands-on have you had? Well, I built a lab in my basement. No, we want people that can learn and will understand hands-on in the real world implications of what they're doing. And when you go in 
to a, a customer site and they say, what are your credentials? I got 10 certificates. Yeah, but you know, who have you worked for? What have you done? What have you learned? What have you caught for somebody? How did you help them fix it? I, 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 I have 10 certificates. <laughs> okay, so look for education and information and have the appropriate foundation in order to pursue that. Yeah, start with Andrew. Start with Andrew Hutz. He's, he's deep into it at both levels. I lost internet connection five times within five minutes. Well, I count that as an average of once per minute. Is it your ISP? Is it your modem? Is it your computer? Have you rebooted your computer? Have you rebooted your computer? Uh, need sleep. Okay, I am root. I lost internet connection yesterday morning. Uh, I, I fired up my machine and I had the globe symbol where my network connection was, but everything was working. It was weird. And actually, that happened to me a week ago, too. I rebooted and the problem went away. And so, all right, something funky going on on my machine. I got too much stuff going on. Uh, I rebooted and the problem didn't go away. So I have my uh, Ethernet connection attached to a, a USB dongle. So I unplugged the dongle and it went wonk, wonk, wonk. And I waited 10 seconds and I plugged in and went wonk, wonk, wonk. And I totally lost all internet connection. I had the, the globe symbol and no internet connection at all. So I went poking around back there and the uh, ethernet connector in my dongle was just hanging there. So put it back in, uh, back in biz. I, you know, almost always for me, except for that time when we had the, uh, the IP address conflict when I have something wrong, nine times out of 10, it's a physical layer problem. Read more questions. Do double colons require dual colonoscopies? <laughs> Why do I read your questions out loud? Hey, uh, Sarish, nice to see you, my friend. Shreth. Shresh. I'm going to go with Sarish Shreth. Shresh. Oh, I apologize for mangling your name if I did, but I'll bet I'm 80% I'm there. Uh, Sharish, can you, uh, can you make a course on cybersecurity for beginner? We have, no, it, it, that doesn't make sense, uh, Sarish. Uh, cybersecurity for a beginner doesn't exist. Cybersecurity is a course for people who have background in networking and security. So we have a couple of different courses We've got a, a Pentest Plus course available on Udemy. Just look for uh, Pentest Plus and look for uh, courses that start with the title total. We also have Cybersecurity Analyst, a CYSA course. But no, it, it just doesn't make sense to have a CyberSec course for a beginner. You, you've got to have foundation. You could take a college course that leads a, a college curriculum that leads to a degree in cybersecurity. You know what you're going to start out with? Math and English. And then you're going to start with how computers work. And then you're going to work your way into networking. And then you're going to work your way into aspects of security and so forth. So, and in four years, two years, if they have those degrees, then you can call yourself a cybersecurity specialist. So, sorry. Uh, what does the VM has a different IP address than the host? It should. Um, a virtual machine is a computer within a computer. It doesn't know that it's a computer within a computer. It's a computer. <clears throat> so there are four ways to set up an IP address in a virtual machine. One of them is NAT. You can It has a little artificial NAT router in there, and it you give it an IP address inside the virtual machine and it converts it to the address of the host machine, which then uses that on its regular network and its outbound network. You can bridge. A bridge says you're gonna create a unique IP address and it will use your physical network interface card, but it will generate internally a virtual card, but it, it needs to have a unique IP address. It's a unique computer. 
not going to get into the other two methods. They're unusual and esoteric. Ah, who said that? Uh, San Forfano saw a good bit of you on Wednesday. What is it? Okay, that was you. Sorry about that. That was 335. Andrew, if I don't know it, I'll find out for the person asking, Bob Delawitt. New pen test PTO2 will launch October 27, 2021. Uh, and we are, I, I'm told that we are working on a PT0002. I don't know what its status is, how far along it is. Bug boundaries and CVE is a great way to attend. Okay, so that's one aspect of CyberSec is pursuing bug bounties. What is the Discord channel link? Scott, have you posted that? Yes, you did. Scott posted the current Discord channel links at 343. So yeah, please join us uh, after the show here. I'm going to join on in 10 to 15 minutes after the show is done. <clears throat> Jason Hallam is done with work. Man, you've been a busy guy. We've been in touch a lot lately, so that's good. Uh, okay. Tullowit posted in text a path to certification guides on CompTIA. Okay. Here, I'll tell you what. I will post that same thing here, HTTPS colon whack whack. W, I'm not going to do W's, comptia.org slash certifications slash which dash certification. Thank you, Tolwit. All right, I posted that at the current time, 46. Got to get moving here. Got to get a contest underway. Uh, Jason Helms talking, Jason Helms passing 344. Yes, Patricia Minusi is Patricia Grace. We all know that. Let's go. Yeah, you're in time, Jace, uh, Jason, to uh, participate in the voucher contest. That's awesome. Uh, you got a headset, Patricia. Good. We were talking about that on uh, Discord last night. Kraken was a little more than you had in mind, so you got a Logitech headset. Cool. SOC analyst is a good place to get your foot in the door for CyberSec. Okay. Browse Best Buy. There's my link. And very good. All right. Caught up on questions. It's 346. Let's talk about a voucher contest. So, first thing I want to do is put up information. Is the RPI Foundation Charity Business Both Account? We can do that in a second. Uh, Tuesday guest announcement friends install cockpit voucher. There we go. Okay, I have a slide to show you. <clears throat> and the slide is, if you win today, you're gonna send an email to Mike Myers himself. He's the interface, <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, to our contacts at CompTIA who are doing this. So you're gonna send it to Michael M at Total Sim. You're gonna identify yourself the, uh, what's your real name and what's your YouTube name that you use when you want the voucher. So you got to provide the winner's name, the winner's email address, the country where you're going to uh, take the CompTIA exam. These are good in any country that you can take this stuff. So that's cool, right? I mean, Canada and England and uh, I don't know if there's Pearson View in Bangladesh, but if there is, the voucher will be good there. Now, I, I don't know this. Um, I would include one other piece of information, and that is what exam you intend to take. But I don't know if that's necessary. This may be a global voucher that when you register, you decide at that time, uh, oh, I think I'm going to register for the whatever. Now, you can't, they're good for any exam except CYSA. I don't know the rationale behind that. There it is. And if you have already registered with CompTIA for other exams, use the same name and the same email that you're registered under. Okay, I got a question here um, that I wanna answer. The question is, is Raspberry Pi Foundation a charity or a business or both? So let me answer that with, and then we'll do, uh, dive into the contest. Raspberry Pi Foundation 
is the charitable arm of Raspberry Pi and the uh, the sales arm and, and technical development arm is called Raspberry Pi Trading. And interestingly, they just... <laughs> I'm sorry, Scott. I thought that was a question that you pulled from somebody. That's twice, man. I am just totally off. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll try this one. Uh, this is Harry. This is going to take research here. Uh, I'm going to give four minutes from the time I answer the question for somebody to come up with this. Uh, the problem with this is if you don't come up with this, um, we don't know. You know what? I want to stay on as long as it takes. I won't shut off until we have come up with a contest that somebody can win. Okay. So Raspberry Pi Foundation is a registered charity. It's in. It's registered in England and in Wales. And what we want to know is what is the registered, what is their charity registration number? Okay, that's the contest for today. The charity registration number of Raspberry Pi Foundation in England and Wales. Man, what a contest. <laughs> you may beat one of our back channel people with a wet noodle for that one. So that's how you participate. You put that number in the chat feed, put the information that you provided, <clears throat> that you've discovered, and the first one to come up with that number will win the voucher for today. Richard, that was, might be it. But we're going to give other people, that may or may not be, because I don't have the number in front of me here. Uh, whoever, the back channel person who posted it, uh, has not put it in front of my face so that I can't either close up early or <laughs> ignore it or whatever. So once we get uh, a few entries in here for a couple of minutes, two people posted the same number. I don't know if that's right. They may just be copying from each other. <clears throat> so I don't know. The world holds its collective breath. Another minute or so. <clears throat> Everybody's doing the same thing. Maybe I'll put that number in and see if I can win. <laughs> Let me see. Well, that's happening. I got to bring up a document here. This one. Okay. I can put that over there. <clears throat> I got notes on the back channel about places that our back channel people are looking for it. And they're giving me a list of places that they can't find it. How's that? Yeah, I'll repeat the question here because I'm not getting any input. You can do this with research. What is the charitable registration number in England and or Wales for Raspberry Pi Foundation? Their, their headquarters is actually in Wales. We talked to Dr. Evan Upton last year, uh, and I didn't know that. I just, uh, England, it's an English development. Uh, no, 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 the factory's in Wales and his offices are in Wales, so... <clears throat> Seriously, we got three people trying this out of 16. <laughs> oh, okay. Something's just happened, informationally speaking, on the back channel. What's going on here? They posted the number. I didn't get a chance to read it. And now I see a big no. Oh, there it is. Okay, 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 okay. I got it. I got it. It's up there. Raspberry Pi Foundation, Richard Bro says, is registered in England. Everybody who Googled it got the same answer. Hmm. Okay, so the way this works is, uh, I'm going to look at the number here in a second, is not only the first person who come up with the answer, but the one that appears first in my feed. You guys will get different lists. Uh, and, and somebody will appear different uh, first in your list than mine, but I got to go based on mine. So I'm looking here at the back channel and I see the number 1129409. And Richard Bro was the first one, 1129409. Nice. <clears throat> so yeah, that was easy. We'll do a harder one next time. It was kind of easy. Let me make some notes here about the winner. 
And then I'll put that slide up again on what you have to do. Today is 10 8 R pi F charity reg number in England and Wales. Do you think they see Wales in Wales? <laughs> No, I never looked at that up. I wonder why Wales is named Wales. All right, saving that. Okay, Richard, uh, bro, let me repost this. What you need to do. Oh, it's it on this slide. <clears throat> so you're going to send an email to Michael M at totalsem.com. And I'll put this up for you to see and share. Put this, put this, and this, share. Okay, send an email to Michael M at totalsem.com. Identify yourself. If that's your real name, tell them you're Richard Bro, and tell them your YouTube name is Richard Bro. You won the voucher on Dave's drama, today's date. <clears throat> so you're including your name. Give an email address, and if you've already been registered with CompTIA, use the email address that you registered with CompTIA. Same thing for your name. The, identify the country where you're going to take the CompTIA exam. And again, I would include, if you know, uh, the name of the exam that you intend to take. But I don't know that that's mandatory information. And uh, if you don't put it in and it is mandatory, somebody will write you back and say, which voucher did you want? And what will happen is Mike passes this on to CompTIA. And CompTIA will send the voucher and or any questions to you. So sweet. My first giveaway that's not based on a special occasion. Again, we do have a special occasion coming up on the 29th on Discord. Uh, we're going to do a, a, a contest, a, a costume party contest. So come, you're going to need a camera. A mic would be helpful too. I'm going to judge on best costume. There's no criteria. It's just the one that I like the best. Uh, and the second that I like the best, and the third that I like the best. Uh, sometimes we get about a dozen people, and that's about it. So your odds are good and doing well. There's going to be a Raspberry Pi kit for sure. Uh, might do a voucher that day. Might do two other things. I don't know what it's going to be. But we do know at least one of the prizes will be a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, let's talk about the next two weeks. And then I'll do last questions and then get things wound up here. Next week's show, again, because I got the big project on my plate, I got to do a simple one. Uh, we're going to do some new, different, fun, and amazing Linux commands. Uh, and we're going to do, in particular, some commands. And then we're going to use commands. There goes Tullowit doing the research. Uh, that include the exclamation point, known in programming and computer speak as the bang. There's about 10 ways to use bang on the command line, it does some really cool things. So I'm going to dive into that. We've talked about uh, everyday commands that everybody knows and uses. We do sudo and ls and cd and apt and install and things like that. Those are, are your bread and butter commands. Uh, and then there's the commands that nobody ever uses. Uh, and then there's the in-betweens that will really impress somebody. If you go to uh, an interview and you got to start talking about Linux and, oh yeah, well, you can do uh, the history command and then bang 1504. And when you explain what that is, some of them are going to say, you know that? That's incredible. You will know that. Okay. So that's next week's show. And then the week after that, RetroPie. Mike has his normal show on Monday, no specific feature topic. Uh, look at last questions here. Uh, let's move this over here and then I can read it because I like that stuff. Uh, reading questions here. Carla Rain, congrats. Everybody's congratulating you. Thank you all for participating. English words, Wales and Welsh. This is from our Russian speaker derived from the same old Valhats which was itself derived from the name of the Gauls. Okay, from the Roman. Okay, thank you, Tullowit. 
<clears throat> then the Anglo-Saxons, of course, they came in when the Saxons came in in 1066. And yeah, yeah, yeah. To do a whole, uh, Scott is a, uh, uh, an expert on these things. So should be cool. We'll dive into that. All uh, right, we've got specials this week for uh, discount bundles, 50% off ebook and total tester bundles for A+, Net+, Sec+, CYSA+, Pentest+, and AWS Systems Architecture Associate. Go to totalsem.com, load up your loot bag, and then when you check out, use the code Sputnik, S-P-U-T-N-I-K, or in Cyrillic, as Tullo would put it in, Sputnik in Cyrillic, and that would be the pronunciation. I don't know the letters except for, no, I don't see a yeah. Oh, yeah, there is. There's a yeah. Okay. All right, well, let's wind this thing up then. It's been a great couple of hours. I had a really good show. Enjoyed spending the time with you. As always, I am David Rush. I'm the senior instructor at Total Seminars, resident pie specialist. I wish you a great weekend. Take care of each other. Take serious steps to stay healthy. Call, visit your parents and your family. And never forget, technology is great, but the greatest resource we have are you and I. So good night. I'll see you on Discord in a few minutes and at the AMA next week. And until then, I am out of here.